Hi, this is Joseph Lebrecht, and this video is going to be about getting Starling, or the Starling framework, running inside of Adobe Animate CC. So let's pop over to the actual Starling page, and you can find that here at uh, this address. And what you'll want to do is go to download, and then download Starling. Uh, right now the version is 2.2, but of course that's going to change as new versions of Starling are released. Once that's downloaded, you can put the starling.swick that you'll find in the bin folder inside of just a place that you can find it easily. Um, I've got this content drive that I use for all sorts of uh, content. So that is going to exist just on the root there for this project. And it'll be really easy for me to find. So popping over to Adobe Animate, you can see here that what we have is a simple stage setup at 60 frames per second. We're using 400 by 300 for the width and height. And I have my stage color set to this kind of uh, nice yellow color. In terms of the timeline, all we have is just the basic layer that's been created for us for this Flash Player project. It's an ActionScript 3.0 project, of course, because we're using Starling. And it's a one-frame animation. And the only things that are actually in here are just some static text fields um, that are just rendered inside of Animate. So to actually get Starling working in here, what we're going to need to do is include that SWIC file that we downloaded from the Starling website. Inside of your ActionScript 3.0 settings, you want to click on Edit ActionScript Settings here, this little wrench. And that's going to bring up this window. You'll notice here that we have our starling.swick. So let's actually remove that. You're not going to see that at first. You're going to have the ActionScript 3 libs right here from the app config. But what you're going to want to do is actually just add a new path here. And then click this button to browse for a SWIC file. And from here, you can locate the actual SWIC. I place this in the root of my content drive. So open. And then there it is. And you can see if you twirl down that it's going to be merged into our code and hit OK. With that done, we also need to change our publish settings. So if you go to publish settings right here, under Flash Swift, you're going to notice hardware acceleration way down at the bottom here. And this is in the advanced area, so you may need to twirl this down if you can't see it. But we have hardware acceleration. We need to set that to level 1 direct. And we use that to use stage 3D, which of course Starling relies upon. So once that change has been made, all you need to do is hit OK. Now at this point, Starling is available with the inclusion of the SWIC through our ActionScript 3.0 settings. And our published settings are correct for displaying stage 3D content. So all we need to do is write some code, some classes to get Starling working. So you'll notice here that I have bound a startup class. The class is named startup. And that class is our document class. And it actually exists right here as startup.as. And this class exists right alongside my FLA. So it's in the exact same directory as the project. And here we import flash.display.sprite because we're going to extend Sprite with this class. And we also are importing starling.core.starling. Now, if you actually have any sort of animation going on in the timeline, I have a single frame here, so Sprite's OK. If you have animation for your document class, you're going to want to extend movie clip instead of Sprite. Here we create a private variable called starling. And there's a private function startup, which of course matches our class name of startup. What we need to do there is set Starling equal to a new Starling instance, pass in our game class, which exists right here as another class in ActionScript, and pass in the default stage. And then we just say Starling.start. Now inside of this game class is where we render stuff. So here we're importing both Starling display sprite and Starling text text field. Again, this is a game class, game has to match the file name with the class name. And we're extending Sprite here in our constructor function for game. 
We're creating a new starling text field. And we're just passing in a width and height and a message. So welcome to starling. And then we add child. So it's adding it to the current starling stage right here. So let's actually run this. We can go to control test. All right, there we are. So we can see that our regular animate CC stuff that we created in the UI exists as well as our stage 3D Starling stuff. So there's welcome to Starling there. And it, it tells us in the output panel that our context is ready. And it even tells us the display driver being used. And really, this is, uh, this is all it takes to get started working with the Starling framework inside of Adobe Animate CC.